Has Christianity always been one of the religions in the world to you? Oh, hallelujah. Christianity is not a religion. Neither is it a joining of a church and doing the Christian things like praying and giving and so on. Hallelujah. Christianity is the outworking of God's own kind of life received into the spirit of a man. Whoa. This divine life in the heart of a man makes him righteous, keeps him healthy, divinely guarded in life, prosperous and victorious. It gives you the ability to enjoy intimate fellowship with the Father and have dominion on this earth. Hallelujah. This is what awaits you if you will wholeheartedly believe that Jesus is the Son of God raised from the dead and personally confess him as the Lord of your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Join Dr. David Binder on the Good Life Devotion every Monday to Friday on this channel and receive truth that will usher you into exhibiting the divine life. The New Creation Conference is God's idea. The Bible says something to us in Ephesians 5 verse 27 that Christ, that he will present to himself a church that is glorious, a church that is without spot or wrinkle, that is a mature church. So the New Creation Conference is for the maturity of the body of Christ. This is why you cannot miss any of the New Creation Conference. The NCC Hub is all about reminiscing things of the past, going through past sessions of the New Creation Conference, looking at dimensions that the Spirit of God would like us to retreat so that He will minister to us, those of us who were there and those of us who were not there, and also get us more prepared for what He has for us in this year's New Creation Conference. Wow, 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 wow. Praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody shout glory. Wow. If today's your first time, you may wonder why I'm so excited. It is because for us in the final global movement and all the members of the Gula Division family around the world, this is like our Christmas season. It's like our end of year major event. It is the new creation conference. Glory to God. A platform that the Lord is using to enlighten, impart, and energize the entire body of Christ to discover our divinity and manifest it in this world. And we do not joke with it at all. So I'm excited because we're in a season that we started having the New Creation Conference have discussions. These are panel discussions in which we take excerpts of previous sessions of the New Creation Conference and then we dig into them and reminister and inspire ourselves, expand our capacities and get prepared for the upcoming New Creation Conference. Remember this year is later for the Thursday the 9th and Friday the 10th of November. On the morning of the Friday, we're going to have a special minister's fellowship. So if you're a minister of God, guess that it's going to be an awesome time. Okay, so we are getting set with all these discussions, and that is why I am so excited. Wow, on this note, I welcome you to today's special episode of our favorite Gula devotion. Gula devotion is a daily devotional teaching of the truth of God's word, aimed at bringing the entire body of Christ in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, and to equip you as an individual to be very effective in the work of the ministry and deliver to you the keys of the kingdom that will help you to enjoy that great life that Jesus Christ brought to us. So today, as we did yesterday, we're going to uh, move in retrospect into the National Theatre as it was last year. We started dealing with the topic of manifest your glory. We're going to have a watch at another session for this whole episode. But remember, I'll be coming to you tomorrow with mighty sons and daughters of God. And we are going to, by the Spirit, dig out matters. You know, it's like soup with chunks of different kinds of meat. And we're going to dig them out and break them for digestion. You can't miss it. So get set as we take a watch at this excerpt from last year's New Christian Conference. Shall we share a word of prayer? Father, in the name of Jesus, our hearts, our minds, our bodies, our homes, wherever we are, we are set for the transmission that you are about to transmit into us. We receive it all and we are move to our next level in life in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So let's watch this and I'll be right back for us to draw a conclusion on that. John chapter 1 verse 14, the Bible says, talk about from the, the word from verse 1, and in verse 14 it says that 
And the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. And we beheld his glory as the glory of the only begotten of God, full of grace and truth. The glory they saw from Jesus, the glory they, they observed from Jesus, it was the glory of one of a kind. The only begotten that has no mean that the only one God gave birth to is the word monogenes. One kind. Gene means a kind. Mono means one. One of a kind. The world had never seen one of such. He says, we have seen some kinds of glory. But this glory we are beholding from this person is the glory as of the only one of his kind from God. When he died, he rose again, ushered in a new era. And he left us here to continue beaming this glory. He did in the marriage. The Bible says that in the marriage ceremony, he manifested forth his glory. Now the Lord says to you that this is the time to manifest forth your glory. Hallelujah. You are living here to manifest your glory. Something is happening to you right now. I know it. Your home is never the same after tonight. Your family is never the same after tonight. Your community is never the same after tonight. Ghana is never the same after tonight. And our world is never the same after tonight. For you are living here to beam forth the glory of God. Hallelujah. Remember the words that you are hearing, they are alive and they are spirit. They don't come to excite you. This is national theater, but now this is a different atmosphere. It is no more a place for entertainment. It is a place for making lives. Are you hearing me, somebody? You are being made in the name of Jesus. You are being made in your spirit. You are being made in your soul. And you are being quickened in your body. Shout it is happening. Shout it is happening. Say it is happening in me. Say it is happening in my spirit. It is happening in my soul. It is happening in my body. In the name of Jesus. It is happening. He left us here. Give the Lord a hand clap. Thank you. He left us here to manifest for what he, he came to do. And he didn't hide it from us. In Matthew chapter 5, he stood up and made amazing statements. Verse 14. He looked at you and I and said, Ye are the light of the world. He didn't say, You are the light of Accra. How much God believes in you. You see, your life is not, you're not a nobody. You know, there can be a big pool of water. When you drop a little stone at the center, there's something called ripples. It moves from the center to the very end of the pool. You are like a drop in the ocean of the ecosystem of the whole world. You were made to make ripples that will affect North America, South America, Europe, Asia, Australia. You are starting that now. Your ripples will reach nations. In the name of the Lord Jesus. He says, you are the light of the world. Then he says, let me tell you something. A city set on a hill cannot be hid. I cannot be hid. It is too late to be hid. I tell you, brothers and sisters, for over 2,000 years, there were some species on the earth called the church. Who were as though we were being hidden. But the days have come. A city set on a hill cannot be hid. The church cannot be hid. This is that day. I'm excited. This is that day. This is that day. You will no more be hid. Do you know what he was telling you? He was saying that Satan cannot hide you. 
Systems cannot hide you. And because he ordained that that city cannot be hid, he knows what to do. That's why he is raising us up. That that which wanted to be hid, because the master said it cannot be hid, we are here today. We are here today to wake that thing up. To stir that thing up. Are you hearing me, somebody? I'm happy for the world. The world has solution. Glory to God. <laughs> the world has solution. Are you here, somebody? We are the solution. It says, a city set on a hill cannot be hid. Then he, he went further to stress. He says, neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel. He says, if men will not do that, and I came into this world and I lit you up, do you think I lit you up to keep you inside this body to be dominated by disease? Do you think I lit you up to keep you inside a small family to be dominated by curses and witches? Do you think I lit you up to keep you in a country and be buffeted by challenges? Do you think I lit you up to keep in a continent and cause you to be dominated by continental dimensions? No, it says men do not light a candle and put it under a bushel. If men will not do that, you cannot be healed. Listen, something is happening to you. I've been sent to wake that person inside you up. He said, Jesus said, you cannot be healed. One of his ways of ensuring you cannot be healed is to bring you here to hear these words. Is to make you connect and hear these words. There is a king inside you. There is a giant inside you. That giant can no more be healed. If you give attention to what the Lord has for you. Over tonight and tomorrow. He says, neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel. But on a candlestick. And it giveth light. Kadibara Kaduza. And it giveth light unto how many? All that are in the house. Are you hearing me? The whole world is my house. Because he defined your house. He said, Ye are the light of the. So, what is your house? What is your house? So if your house is the world, then family economics should not limit you. If your house is the world, then national economics should not limit you because your house is bigger. It says, it gives a light to all who are in the house. Then it says, let your light so shine. He said, it is a BD. He says, let your light so shine. <laughs> let your light so shine. Are you hearing me? Somebody give somebody a high five. Tell him, let your light so shine. Tell another person, my light is so shining. My light is shining. My light is shining. My light is shining. Hallelujah. He says, let your light so shine, not so that nobody can feel it. So, this kind of Christianity where it is only you, you haven't started. <laughs> Christianity where you are living in a house, and all they see about you is you carry a big Bible to church on Sunday. It's no Christianity. It says, let your light so shine before me so that they may observe, they may behold your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Shout hallelujah. Why? 
when he came, they said, we beheld his glory. And we knew that it was one of the kind of the father. He says, now you two, let your light so shine that men will see your good works. And then they will give glory to the father. Stop living for yourself. Stop living for yourself. The enemy, let your light so shine that men will see your good works. Let your city see your good works. Let your nation see your good works. Let your world see your good works. From today, you are good works happening everywhere. You are a bundle of good works happening everywhere. So I'm a bundle of good works happening everywhere. Hallelujah. He said that because he set us to continue beaming the glory. I'm sharing with you on manifest your glory. Then in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, the apostle started speaking from verse 1, then he go to verse 6. Then it says, God, who commanded light to shine out of darkness. First, step one, he has shined in our heart. So, he has shined in me. I am born again. Oh, look at what that means. God has shined in me. Then he says, it doesn't stop there. He has shined in us to give. The reason why he's shining in you is to give. Are you hearing that? He has shined in us to give. No, let's read it together. Do you have your Bibles with you? Second Corinthians chapter 4. Let's take it from verse 6. For God, who commanded light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to do what? The emphasis I wanted to get is that to give. He has shined in our heart to do what? To give. I want you to get it. God did not shine in your heart to keep. He shined in your heart to give. Be solution conscious. Don't be looking for solutions. He has shined in your heart to give. How God believes in you. Everybody is looking to somebody for, for help. That day has passed. He has shined in your heart to give. Not to receive. So the Christ in you is so you can give. Not so you can receive. <laughs> I give. I give. I give. I'm a giver. God has shined in my heart to give. I want you to live here with this mentality. He has shined in my heart to give. So, I live to give. To give what? You know, this is why a lot of people when you say to give, they're just thinking you want their money. I didn't say to give money. Because what we give, <laughs> money is for the world. We don't spend money. <laughs> we don't spend money. Men spend money. God doesn't spend money. Did you know that up until some time there was no money in the system? Dollar or euro or whatever didn't draw from heaven. It's man-made. There is an economy God runs that was corrupted through a system that came to what we call fiat economy. Men live by that economy. Hallelujah. Man is the greatest creation of God, not because man is the most complex, because man is the only species that has the capacity to receive, retain, and transmit God's glory. Now, when a man now says, I believe Jesus died and rose again, what happens is instantly he receives it, 
He begins to contain it and he has sent me to show you how to transmit it. Shout glory! The final global movement is bringing you this year's edition of the New Christian Conference with Dr. David Bender live this November with a message that will move the church to the matured place for function. Date Thursday 9th and Friday 10th of November 2023. Venue The National Theatre, Accra, Ghana. Get ready, register now. Admittance is free and you must be there. New Creation Conference, helping you exhibit the divine life. So you are shining a heart to give something. Let's see what it says to give. To give what? The knowledge. Mm. Mm. He has shined in our heart to give what? The light of the knowledge. Of the glory of God. So he has shined in our heart to give the light. Which light? Remember he said, let your light so shine. Okay. Which light is it? Is it disco light? Is it studio light? To give the light of what? The light of, then he defined the light, the knowledge of the glory of God. Now listen to this carefully. You have to shine a certain light. The name of that light is knowledge of the glory of God. So, when I shine towards you, you have knowledge of the glory of God. You, you understand? So what I am shining to you gives you knowledge of the glory of God. So if you didn't know the glory of God, when I shine, you know what the glory of God is. So we, we are shined in our hearts so that we will give a certain light it is the light of the knowledge of the glory of God. In the face of Jesus, which means in the presence of Jesus. So, in other words, in oneness with Jesus, we shine forth. And when we shine, men see. They receive knowledge of the glory of God. What does this mean? It means we manifest glory. When we shine, we are manifesting glory. I'm sharing with you on manifest your glory. Say, I'm manifesting my glory. Say, I'm manifesting my glory. It is time to manifest your glory. When Jesus changed the water to wine, the Bible says that by this, he manifested forth his glory. And he says to come and tell you, Manifest your glory. Now let's look, let's let's ask ourselves a few questions. How many of us have been born again for five years or more? Can I see your hands? Whoa, wow, many. Clap. Give yourself a mighty hand clap. How many of us are born again for less than five years? Just a few. Ooh. So you're born again for more than five years. Okay. That means that you've gone to church, if you are regular, 52 times a year, times five, minimum. If you had midweek services and all nights and other meetings, several times per year. Minimum of five years. If you are a regular person who has been praying, it means that 365 days times five, minimum. All right. Ten years or more than five years of doing this thing, how has that benefited your life? Can this body that you are living in, can your, if I ask your body now, I tell you, I say, can I say, hey, body, for over these five years that this person in you has been a Christian, have you benefited from his Christianity? What will your body say? If I take your Momo number or your bank account number or your pocket or your purse and I ask, 
Miss Pess. The person holding you has been going to church for the minimum of five years. How has that benefited you? What would be the answer from the person? If you are married and I take your wife and I said, your husband has been going to church for the past five years, no minimum five years. How has this thing he is doing called Christianity, how has it benefited you as a wife? And I do vice versa. What would be the response? If I Seclude your children. And say, your, is that your father? Says, yeah, yeah, yeah. How old are you now? I'm 10 years. So he's been going to church since you were born, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How has his Christianity benefited you? Are, are you following me? If I take your fiscal brother and I ask them, your brother is a Christian, he prays in tongues, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For more than five years. Yeah. How has his Christianity benefited you as a family? If I walk into your town, or your city, and I, I mentioned your name, and we put you on radio everywhere. Say, this guy has been going to church for more than 10 years. Town, how has his Christianity benefited you as a city? What will be the response? If we take your nation and put you on all the national media platforms, we ask the whole nation. Yeah, this person has been a Christian for 10 years. Nation, what is the advantage of his Christianity to you? What will be the response? People of God, until each of these things can give a response of the knowledge of the glory of God, Christianity hasn't begun. This is why we are here. Hallelujah. God brought us here to transform us into sons and daughters whose Christianity will be advantageous to our bodies, advantageous to everything about our lives, advantageous to our families, advantageous to our communities and our nation and our world. A Christianity that has got to affect the community and the nation and the world is not a Christianity Jesus started. Is something else. Manifest forth your glory. Manifest your glory. Wow, 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 wow. These are really amazing days on the surface of the earth. In fact, the world is gradually progressing to a place where none of the evil challenges of this world will be without a solution from the church. Because we are discovering and maximizing the power of the Christ within to become the solution center to all the problems of this world. That the world may know that in Christ Jesus is the solution to all its problems. Now maybe you have not received Christ because the Christianity you have heard and seen around has never been beneficial to life. But that is not the truth. There is a Christianity that benefits your life your family, your city, your nation, and your world. It is still the same Jesus. But when you know truth, you do better. But it begins first by receiving Christ, becoming born of God as a child of God. Then you can consume these truths and become such a caliber of Christian. Do you want to become a son of God today? If that's what you want to. Then believe with all your heart that God raised him from the dead after he died and took away the sin of mankind. And Declare his lordship over your life by saying this after me. Say, dear Lord Jesus, with all my heart I believe that by your resurrection from the dead, you made eternal life available. Jesus, I receive this life now as I declare Jesus is Lord of my life. Hallelujah. Well, if you have done this all your heart, truly you are born again. Surely, I'm going to come tomorrow with a group of panelists as we take a look at the message we had yesterday and today, and we are going to feast deeply into them. So don't miss the coming episodes from tomorrow to the end of the week, because they are going to be power-laden. So I'll meet you in the next episode. Life is good. Enjoy. Thank you for joining today's episode of your favorite Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Pendant. The Good Life Devotion is proudly brought to you by friends and partners of the Final Global Movement. 
For more information on how to become a partner, call us on 053-444-6907 or log on to our website, finalglobalmovement.org. Become a partner today and contribute to the global spread of God's message for the now. Follow us on our various social media handles and you will be blessed. Don't miss the Good Life devotion on the channels displayed on your screen at the scheduled times. Till we come your way with the next episode of the Good Life devotion with Dr. David Benden. Life is good. Enjoy. Enjoy.